What's up my dudes, it's Maz, your favourite broadcast in Japan. Yes, I'm a bit rough today, my voice is... I just thought I'd give you an update because I haven't uploaded anything in like two weeks or something and I am editing like three different videos but I've just been so busy and stressed recently, it's been crazy. Yesterday I went really early to... Crows. The immigration office, I had to resubmit my uh, Zaidu card, which is the residence card. Maybe I can find it for you right now. So all of my classmates renewed the visa, December, January time, because it ran out. I had to update my visa and all of the rest of my uh, classmates all of their cards uh, ended up being about uh, a year and a half, right? To last them until graduation or two years or something, right? Mine, mine ended up being, great photo I know. Okay, well that's not focusing, but <laughs> ended up being six months. <laughs> so I didn't even notice. I went to pick it up. I rushed back to school, I had class. And then I noticed. Son of a bitch. Son of a. Son of a. So then I had to redo the whole process again. And when you apply, you have to go. It's this place. It takes about an hour to commute there from my house. It's in the middle of. God ass nowhere. I have to get on a bus and then a train and then another bus. Immigration office want to move all of the foreigners out of the fucking way of normal people. Once you fill out all of the 10,000 forms and give it to them, they'll send you back your little postcard saying it's ready to pick up and then you got to go back there and then you got to pay 4,000 yen, which is this much. I will put. A bit of a stressful time. So I went yesterday. We received on Monday. Finally, I think people in my ward, Hodagaya ward, received the application for the Juman, 100,000 yen, as a kind of stipend, support, money, right, due to coronavirus. This was promised to us way back in March, um, and only was received by us on Monday. So we filled that out and sent that on Wednesday with the photocopy of my residence card. So even though it's short, I really hope I get that because that's going to help me big time. It's been, it's been tough. <laughs> it's been tough. <laughs> Lastly, today, I just got back from work. It's Saturday. I just got back from work and uh, I saw in my letterbox that finally today, the masks arrived from the government. The ones that they promised us in March, you know, the two masks per household. In the meantime, I've had, my friends have sent me masks and everyone's got masks, so this is really fucking not useful. No, everyone's still wearing masks, like, in day-to-day -day life now, so it is useful, I guess, but it's just very late. There was a massive mask shortage in March and April, and now that there's no more masks shortage, now they arrive, after everyone's already bought them, so, great, thanks. I started back at work properly last week, uh, physically coming into work, with the occasional Skype lesson, but mostly normal work, and I'm working again three days a week, which is really good. This week I haven't been able to sleep much because I had a birthday on Wednesday, which of course I had to, you know, get the birthday boy drunk and supply the tequila. Drinking again yesterday and as you can tell, I'm glad I just still have a voice because otherwise <laughs> teaching English without a voice really tests you as a human being. Luckily it was okay. Still avoiding going to Tokyo, I think it's best, even though the cases are not increasing as fast anymore. At the beginning of this whole thing, I would say that I was very vocally critical about how Japan handled the whole corona situation. Being in contact with all of my friends and family from various countries, 
you hear all of these things about lockdown and the, you know, susceptibility and all this shit, you know, oh my god, it's crazy. I was, you know, pretty concerned about how casual or not seriously the government were taking the disease. Now, looking back, I feel like Japan and I think Sweden, is it? The two countries that didn't properly lock down the citizens or stop the economy. Um, they probably were the ones who did the right thing in all this. Yeah, I mean, that's the way, isn't it? It's a kind of a 50-50 gamble. People didn't don't really know, didn't really know what it was. Fear drove a lot of people. Um, I think some people do still think that Japan kind of gambled with people's lives a little bit by not instilling any kind of, uh, of restrictions properly on the people. But, you know, it's interesting because then, you know, you look at all these cases of people who were fined in the US for keeping their stores open, their local businesses open, and, uh, you know, is that is that truly a democracy? Is that warranted? Even if the intention is to save people, you could make the same argument, I suppose, although it's not the same, of course, but it's just kind of ideas I'm thinking about right now where it's like, well, okay, if the government really cared about saving people, then why not ban cigarettes then? Why not ban alcohol? Why not do this kind of thing when flu season properly hits? It's an interesting time and I'm interested to see what the fallout is. Uh, yeah, so that's my update. I'm really sorry, I've just been so busy with the move, um, with the various documentation bull crap that I've sorted. Luckily, yesterday was like, you know, going to the immigration office and finally, you know, submitting the visa stuff. I'm just like, oh my God. I won't be happy until I receive the damn card though. And it doesn't have six months on it, you know, at least as my teacher said, give me seven. Okay. At least give me seven. Hope you enjoyed my little update. <laughs> I know it was really interesting. Take care of yourself, dudes. I'll definitely upload a more interesting video for you guys next time. Uh, but for now, uh, I gotta go to bed. I know it's like 5 p.m. But I'm, I have not slept for the last few days, really. So hang in there. Talk to you guys soon, okay? Mwah.